Welcome to Scope Creep Saloon, hosted by three of the dumbest fellas on two legs. You got a beautiful brine all over the avocado now. And yeah, it's going to stay fresh out. forever. Because the avocado, I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a blank slate, right? It's like a blank canvas for which you for uh, uh, which you can paint upon, right? Mm. It's 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 a lot of fat. It's more about a texture than a than a flavor. An avocado is so you know. I think you can kind of um, you know you need salt. Mm-hmm. You could use some some acid. Mm-hmm. A dill dill, I assume, could work well with an sure. avocado. I just just you know it needs the acid so it stays stops from oxidizing. That's all I, I was thinking about. No, 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 no. When it gets brown, it tastes better. What the fuck are you talking? You gotta about? let it. You, you gotta let it hell? get brown. I'm not gonna eat a brat. You're full of it. What the you're, hell? You're, He's you're doing, doing a bit. A, yeah, you're doing a bit on me. No, definitely not, dude. <laughs> if I see <laughs> you eat a brown <laughs> avocado, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> well, not the whole thing brown, but like just a couple brown spots. Uh, add some. Add some. I mean, I'll have you know? a couple brown spots. I don't like it, but I don't I'll, think anyone I'll prefers be, it. Yeah. Drew, that's re- that's really curious. Andrew, you're fucked up. Have you ever, I, here's a question: Have you ever have you, have you ever tried it? Tried what? An avocado with brown spots? Of course. Yeah, yeah. It's not. And I've better. never thought it still, was better, still... right? Than one without the brown. Well, were you directly comparing? <laughs> I think you were going in with a, your mind already made up. I just don't think that's. I think it's true. a matter of perspective. This is dude. such a strange stance. Yeah. This really is... curious. <laughs> This is like a weird hill to die on, but I will kill you on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You deserve to be killed. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to Scope Creep Saloon, the show where we take a random prompt and speed run, turning it into a game pitch. I'm Eric. I'm Andrew. And I'm Uncle Frank. And on today's episode, we pulled the slips Koala Bear, Paul Revere, and Buddy Cops. A little hint for today's game is one if by land, two if by sea, three if by a horse that's a man. We want to hear from you, so leave us a line in the Slido link in the show notes or at Scope Creep Pod on Twitter and Scope Creep Saloon everywhere else or go to scopecreepsaloon.com where you can see a number of ways to leave us a message of some sort, if that's your speed, which we hope it is. All right, enjoy the app. It's hat time. What's in the hat? See this nasty old hat? Oh, uh-oh. You better not put your hand in there. Oh, I am. It's disgusting in here. (laughs) 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 I make sure it's physically unpleasant. Oh, yeah. Full of brain worms. (laughs) All right. Here we go. What's happening? First word. Koala bear. Ah. It's nice. It's nice and pleasant. Yeah. Second word. Paul Revere. More history (laughs) for the group. Oh, yeah. Third word. Guys. (laughs) Third word is buddy cops. (laughs) Damn. Damn. Game writes itself. Yeah, it kind of feels like we got queued up for that one. I mean, this is just penance for definitely not being queued up on some of these episodes. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no crouton in this one, I'll tell you. So, mm. <laughs> so I guess before we get started, I'm going to repeat the words. Koala Bear, Paul Revere, Buddy Cops. And then, you cool guys at home who are listening. Think to yourself, how would I turn this into a game? And then just like sit with that thought for a minute. And then take some notes or whatever and send it our way. You can send us a voicemail. You can hit us up on Twitter. You can send us an email. But like we want to hear what you would do before we influence any potential thoughts. Just again, to be clear, do not make it. Do not make the game. Mm-hmm. Don't Think make about the making the game. Think about what you might do, but do not make it under any circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> and now, Eric, is this is this live? Can they send it in right now? <laughs> they sure can. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's exactly shit. how this works. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> we're on the air right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we're gonna wait until people have sent theirs in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it's obviously not not live. Send in your ideas. You can listen to the rest of the episode first. You can, you know, write them down first, whatever you want. But we want to hear from you. People have been like, oh, I have this idea about an episode. And I'm like, great. Send it in. That's what we want to talk about. We want to talk to you guys about it. So no pressure, but send it in. A little bit of pressure. Text me. Text my personal number. Yeah. Come to my house. Tell me about it. (laughs) Say your number. We're live. Say your number. Yeah, so we don't have to do this episode because it's done. It does feel <laughs> like it's done already. Paul Revere is in a, and a koala bear are buddy cops. Right. Yeah, here's – so, yeah, you obviously could have a koala bear and Paul Revere be cops and that it's are buddies. Good, it's a good game. But think about this. What if Paul Revere was a koala bear? Oh. Uh-huh. And there was, a di- uh, there was a different buddy that he had. Ko- koala Revere. Cool. Koala, yeah. Revere. Koala, Revere. <laughs> Koala Revere. Koala Revere. Yeah. Koala Revere. Koala Revere. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, hey, the Koala British Revere. are coming. <laughs> hey, the British are coming, but he walks very, very, very slowly to the You're next not confusing with a sloth, are you? <laughs> Koalas are pretty slow. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not saying they're fast. I just want to make sure that you're thinking no, of the right No, we got the right not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not thinking of a sloth. Although it would be, maybe the sloth is the buddy. Hmm. Yeah. A koala so and a sloth would go well together. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. So the obvious thing here is a koala bear and Paul Revere are buddy cops. And maybe Paul Revere is a koala bear. But let's try to think of what are the non-obvious options here. I was just going to say, what if there's two buddy cops, you know, modern style buddy cops, and they're trying to stop Paul Revere? They're trying oh, to, ca- they're trying to run that. him down. This doesn't involve koala. It, it doesn't saying? involve koalas yet, but I'm sure we could. Figure, yeah, we'll, we'll get know, there. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll shoehorn the koala in. Yeah. So, like, here's what I'm here's what I'm just thinking about. What if the guys from Lethal Weapon just got beamed back into the Revolutionary War? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> could be pretty good. Be pretty good. Yeah. And they're like, we gotta stop this Paul Revere guy. Like they, they have like everyone's using muskets noise. and like you know Mel Gibson's got like a Beretta, right? You know, he'd have yeah. an advantage. And what are they? What's their goal? What are they doing? They're trying to stop it because they hate America. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think they would be on the side of the British. <laughs> yeah, but Mur- Murtaugh, Murtaugh and Riggs are are loose cannons. You know, they're they're working yeah. outside the. You know, they're they're rapscallions. Right. I want them off this case. <laughs> I want them to give me their badge and their gun, but they won't do it. <laughs> um, hmm. And then there's a koala bear. Yeah. Also, another thing, like an image that came to my mind was like Paul Revere carrying a koala bear around in a little pouch. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or what if a what if okay, what if Paul Revere famously riding a horse, what if it was a giant koala? <laughs> what if? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Probably wouldn't work out as well. <laughs> I mean, we think. We don't know. No one's ever done it. It would probably have a hard time feeding it because eucalyptus doesn't really grow too well in the Boston here. area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting to me which which facts you'll hold on to and which ones you won't. You're like, giant koala, great. Yeah. Oh, but the issue is eucalyptus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't, can't feed it. Wouldn't work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can have a giant koala, but it, it would starve to death. I think, I think we have enough potential avenues we can start brainstorming and see where it takes us. What do you guys mm-hmm. think? I think so. Let's do it. I'll put some time on the clock. Today's words, koala bear, Paul Revere, buddy cops. Let's get it. Up next, we take our words for this episode, brainstorm separately, and come back to reveal our ideas to each other. Stay tuned. Alrighty, so we've been writing some notes on our own. We've got three words today, koala bear, Paul Revere, and buddy cops. I'm going to share the board and see what everyone's been cooking. Nice, some some nice imagery of... 
Paul Revere? Is that Paul Revere? Something looks strange about him. Okay, so I typed into an image generator, Paul Paul Wall Revere. So it's the rapper (laughs) Paul Wall and Paul Revere melded into one guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I think it all all it did was make give him a strange hat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> AI is good. Uh okay, Drew, how about you go first? I went first last time. I want Frank to Whoa. go first. Frank, hey. you go first. <laughs> what <You> the dog? <laughs> <laughs> All right. My first game is called Sleepy Koala. It's just a little nice little game where you try to sleep through things. Your uh, koalas are known for being <laughs> sleepy. So you just try to stay in your room and and like noises keep happening outside your bedroom like a car backfires. <laughs> then it gets more elaborate and like maybe like there's cops outside and then there's Paul Revere for some reason going by. <laughs> the you British know. are coming. Ah, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> <Not Paul Revere. laughs> Please, you have to shut the fuck up. Please. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. I guess there's like a mini game you have to play every time to stay asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a game. So there's yeah. that. And then so famously, Paul Revere, I had looked up some Paul Revere stuff. And he didn't have a horse and he borrowed a horse and Mm. possibly multiple horses. So instead of borrowing multiple horses, he borrows different animals the entire time. Oh, that's Mm -hmm. cool. And sort of it's sort of a like traversal game where you can switch between animals to get around. Hmm. Um, So you can switch to a koala and climb up a wall or you can switch to. You know, a snake, a, a snake, and you can go. You can go in the sewers. You can <laughs> get a water base creature. And get sure, a, all that good stuff. I don't know Interesting. what. You're just kind of moving around. I don't know. There, Frank, there's a game uh, there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> no, I like that, Frank. I noticed on this note that you wrote in parentheses, "Borrowed horse, brown beauty." Yeah, is brown beauty the name of his horse? That yes. was part of the historical. Yeah, okay, brown okay. beauty. Yeah. We could work that in there. Maybe the koala is called Gray Beauty. They're, yeah, all, they're all, all the each, animals. Each are animal is called Beauty. beauty. Yeah, they're yeah. all beauties. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wrote Koala Lampur. That could, you know, that's a place. So <laughs> I didn't think I did not think of a game around that, but just good to learn about a place. Where that's is a it? place? That's the capital of Malaysia. Okay. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. I think you did a, a very good job of pushing beyond the buddy cop limit. So well done. <laughs> I did what I could. Yeah. Drew, since you're being such a guy about order, I'll go next. You know, you yeah, last. I'm yeah. being uh, law and order. That's that's what I'm all, that's nice. what I'm all about today. People love that. Yeah. I had very little. I, I got really sucked into like the buddy cop thing. It just I didn't have anything outside of that that I liked. But I at least tried to like explore some maybe different things with it. What I had is America loses the war and Paul Revere, he like bails to Australia. He just says like, oh, I'm out of here. And so he makes his way to Australia and he kind of becomes a drunk. And then he like winds up, he stumbles into some town where their local sheriff is like a koala. And and then they become buddy cops. And, and we can kind of crank the dial on how how human that koala is or not, or if it's literally just a koala, but that's, <laughs> that's how he ends up there. I thought you were going to say Paul Revere is a drunk and he's being like ratatouille by a koala bear. Also oh, very good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That I like. Yeah. I also had on here, Paul Revere and his koala bear are on the run and the buddy cops are the bad Ooh, guys. Okay. Mm. Okay. That was mostly interesting to me because I don't know that I've ever seen that where like the buddy cops are like the, yeah, the yeah, bad yeah. guys and you're mm. like terrified of this duo that is like ravaging the town. That's cool. Um, yeah. And and obviously like you could just make them red coats of some kind, yeah. you know, if you want to yeah. tie it into that theme. Right. Like like the the Brits send like their most fucked up pair of of cops. Yeah. So, yeah, but that, that was basically all I had. All right, Drew, what do you got? Okay, so for my idea, it was a retelling of the Paul Revere Midnight Ride. Paul is a koala, and all the other characters in the story are anthropomorphic animals. I was kind of envisioning a storybook-esque like visual presentation, but like a low polygon thing. Like mm-hmm. I was, for some reason, Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards, like I'd replayed it like 
I don't know, probably like a year or two ago for the first time in a while on my N64. And I was thinking about that art style and I was like, oh, it could be kind of cool for mm. this vibe, you know? So yeah, you and your partner, William Dawes, who is a sloth, must chart your course through Cambridge, Lexington, and Concord while evading capture to warn the locals that the British, who are played by various species of awful bird people, <laughs> are in fact coming. In a change of pace for horses, since all the characters in the game are animals, instead of a horse, you saddle up and ride atop a human man. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, so yeah, most of the gameplay would revolve around stealth. Um, so there are lanterns in, in each town. You must first discover and identify and then light to warn of the impending attack. And yeah, I was thinking also too. So basically it, it plays out sort of like a series of levels like per town, but then like in between towns, randomized encounters could happen like en route to the next town. So sometimes it could be like a horse chase or in this case, a man chase. Sometimes it could be like combat. Sometimes it could be, you know, bandits jump you and you lose some stuff. Sometimes it could be a friend who you meet in passing who provides some kind of aid. And yeah, that was those uh, the main crux of my idea. I was immediately thinking, Eric, when you said the thing about the buddy cops being the villains, that you could bolt that onto this idea very right. easily, which would be pretty cool. But yeah, that was my my stuff. So the whole, I mean, the riding on people is like, you know, my favorite part of that, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but it's like, it's going to be a weird juxtaposition with the rest of the game, it seems. Yeah, uh, yeah we don't necessarily need to do that. It, to was, do that. Very fu- it was very <laughs> funny. To me. No, 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 we need to do that. I'm trying to make it like, it's like a storybook game where there's like a rabbit guy and like, it's like cartoonish, but then you mount up on a human who's like a human man running on yeah. all fours and is in this yeah. like grotesque like position <laughs> essentially yeah eating um, grass yeah it's like the rest of the game is like cartoonish and like almost like fairy not fairy tale like but i guess just cartoonish but and then there's just a human man a naked human man yeah, that you yeah. ride on people behaving like horses is very funny to me like uh, it's like, funny it's know, a little like i don't know it's it would seem like kind of like concerning to me to, to see <laughs> <laughs> i mean you could make it a cute man you can make it a nice looking like a nice guy he's like not having a bad time he's just that's that's what he is he's a horse in this game in this world yeah but i kind of like if they're having a bad time yeah i <laughs> I understand what Frank's saying because there's something particular horrific about imagining like a horse with like human skin like stretched over it. Oof, that's oh, not good. Um, that's not oh, good. yeah, that's that's upsetting. But mm. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> I'm not too concerned with that actually. I think it'll just be a part just, of the game just... that's like a nightmare, and everything else is very cute. And then there's like this unexplained, un- unaddressed yeah. nightmare. That's just uh, what a part I was of thinking was it was just like it was just you remember the visuals in like Untitled Goose Game? You know the people in that game? Yeah, like it, like it looks like one of those people, and it, they're perfectly content behaving and 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 taking on the jobs of a horse. Like they're just mm-hmm. they just okay. they are a person mm. that runs on all fours that is happy to be a horse, and it's See, never explained. I think a big part of this is whether or not it they have a human head or if they have a long horse nose they have a to human me, that's head. like i think they're just a normal person okay with a saddle on them is the thing <laughs> okay about. yeah but see i could be talked into a cronenberg thing that, but that that again puts it at odds with the rest of the aesthetic right yeah in yeah. theory so i to him with their like you know the humans the uh, human humans but I want them to be hyper realistic and I want, I want the characters to be cartoonish, but I want the, the horse people to be hyper realistic. Okay. And I want later in the game, we find out that this is actually in the future after a, an irradiated apocalypse. Wow. Okay. <laughs> of course. And the animals, yeah, animals have become sentient and humans have devolved into horse like beings. I like it. Putting aside some of the specifics of how horrific these horse people are, because <laughs> I think we could talk all night about that. Yeah, I, I didn't expect this to be the uh, the sticking <laughs> the point. The sticking here. point, Drew. I, I I really like the idea. I think it's a nice balance of like some of the things that would feel obvious without being like too obvious. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I got to thinking about, which like feels kind of fun, is 
I like that potentially one dimension of the game. You mentioned that your partner's a sloth, but I'm also wondering if you could do a thing where you have lots of potential partners you can pick from and they're different animals. And so they have uh, different strengths and weaknesses. And so, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah I like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so like there might be like a bird who can like fly around, but like, isn't going to swim across a pond or like, can't like crawl like under into someone's basement. Yeah, maybe that and opens so you, up you, different you, routes or something. You kind of have like different routes, different skills that open up. And there's maybe like, you know, maybe there's like a bond component. And so like, you, there's maybe some incentives to like stick with the same partner through multiple missions, but obviously that changes what the possibility space is. And so you always play a koala or at least the kind of main character is the koala, but like that partner can change. And I, mm-hmm. I think maybe that you can play their portion of the mission as well. Um, yeah. I like also like, I liked Frank, your idea about having um, like a bunch of different steeds. So like maybe right. the human man is just one option. <laughs> No, just a bunch of different humans. The different humans have different skills. <laughs> yeah. Just like a really tall human. You know, yeah. Like, I don't know. You get a human with a that's wearing like a bathing suit and he can swim. Yeah. Some humans can beatbox. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> this human can talk and call out for his to be set free. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk more about these horses. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we, we were able to not talk about the horses for a good 90 seconds. <laughs> we tried. And we're, we're I really, back on the horrific yeah, I horses. Really didn't, yeah, I really didn't expect this to derail You everything. didn't? This, this idea that I had. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> you didn't? That the, the horses can be humans? <laughs> Beautiful. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd say, like, I'm down to to do drew's idea we can flesh out some of these details but like general structure i like frank what are you thinking yeah for sure are we doing the uh the buddy cops we're gonna put that in as the villains kind yeah of yeah yeah i think we absolutely should do that i think it's a great idea yeah it's kind of like you know you're like hiding out on a roof and you see these two british uh, inspectors or whatever right. being buddy cop like yeah that, that checks oh, out frank i think i just thought of, i thought about two like you mentioned your sleepy koala concept, maybe part of like, like part of the game, maybe there are like certain people that are harder to wake up or something. You know what I mean? Like you have, like you have mm. to rouse them. Oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah you got to so, go outside their house and really yell. The British are coming. Yeah. <laughs> you got to bang on pots and pans. You got, you right. got your horse beatbox. Print it. All right, cool. You guys want to, uh, dig into some gameplay details. Let's yes. do it. All right. I'll see you guys on the other side. Now that we have the core concept locked in, it's time to dig into the gameplay. More private brainstorming and sharing when we come back. So, three words today. Koala Bear, Paul Revere, Buddy Cops. Drew sold us on his idea of kind of a Zootopia for Paul's Midnight Ride. Let's talk about some of our gameplay notes. All right, Frank, how about you start us off? All right. So I was thinking of sort of a sound based stealth game, Mm -hmm. kind of like each level is like a big town and you have to lure the British away from certain areas. Right. So you have this, you know, Paul Revere is calling out. He's got this loud call and he can lure the enemies towards him and wrap around and he has to you know, be loud enough in front of the houses to wake the inhabitants up, but not stay there long enough for the enemies to find him. And there might mm-hmm. be like environmental noises that kind of can mask him or he can set off of, you know, he can be like, hey, ring this bell in 10 minutes or something. So mm-hmm. it's all kind of about like stealth on a larger scale, like not like just creeping through a house, but like the entire town is at play. Macro stealth. Know macro stealth big yeah. big time mm. stealth and then i was like koalas famously don't really make sound so <laughs> is that true about koalas i mean they make what cool noises it? but they don't they, they probably make like a eh, like a meh but yeah, yeah probably yeah, yeah they're not like a loud guy but that's fine that's whatever it's more on the paul revere side of things my next idea was to kind of center around the human riding aspect we touched on this a little bit but different humans different size humans have different abilities you have a tall human that allows you access into 
you know, somewhere where the fence, there's fenced off areas. You can have a climbing human, a swimming human, fighting humans. <laughs> By the end, you just have a stable of humans. <laughs> yeah, sure, right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just, uh, Is there a Breath of the wild S mechanic where you have to tame a wild human to like yeah, claim him sure. as, your, as your steed? <laughs> for sure, yeah. But like instead of grazing around, they're like sitting around playing cards or something. No, they're grazing for sure. <laughs> they're yeah, behaving they're exactly like a horse. You're breed. right. They're horses. They're horses. My bad. My bad. <laughs> we can't forget that they're horses. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't lose sight of the core thing here. <laughs> These are not people. Is that the These people are, are horses. horses. The people act exactly like horses. Gotcha. <laughs> my bad. Your sticky note here about humans with different abilities. It does make me wonder too. Like I don't want to deviate from Drew's artistic vision of humans on all fours, but like I could also imagine a version of this where the humans like they're running around on all twos and uh, mm. you're kind of <laughs> perched. <laughs> you can't run around on all twos. All twos. <laughs> yeah. And you're kind of perched on their shoulder, like kind of directing them, like pointing them around stuff. Because okay. then you could do okay. a thing where like they're using their hands for stuff like the climbing like you know maybe they're they're like fist fist fighting you know they're boxing british horse people so just just another way to imagine it but they're otherwise you know these domesticated animals mm. that is interesting i think it might be a little late in the game to reimagine the horse right people. we've invested too much in the horse yeah, thing. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. we've, in, right. we've invested roughly 50 percent of the episode in the horses yeah. <laughs> we can't go back now you're absolutely right <laughs> I'm glad that we're. I'm glad that we're finally drawing a line somewhere. We're, this is this is the line where we go. That's actually too far. We've got a game to make here. You know, we can't just keep reimagining it. I, I didn't expect this idea to rattle you guys like this. Like I, I, this is this is got to us. The yeah, people yeah. are horses, Drew. You're, the, you're, people, you're, you're, the horses are people. Your imagination has been captured by the idea of saddling up on a yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> truly. <laughs> How could it not? I'll go next. You primarily play as the koala, who I think is, we're calling him Paul Revere. He's got a skilled tree. <laughs> ha. Ha. Anyways, just fleshing out the partner idea a bit. So basically, like, you pick a partner at the beginning, and as you move from level to level, if you still have that partner, like, they have their own skill tree that you're investing in, and, like, that is fueled by your relationship of, like, being on the job together. You can switch partners maybe whenever you want, but like you're basically starting at zero with them. And so there's kind of this tension of like, is my investment in this current relationship? Like, do I, do I value that more than potentially the benefits of some other partner for a different mission? If your partner gets killed on a mission, then you have to switch it up. Like, I think if Paul dies, like when you're playing his side, then, you know, it's a checkpoint and you restart. But if your partner dies, then that's it. And you have to get a new one. And then, yeah, different animals for these partners. They have different kind of traversal, stealth, and combat ability trade-offs. So, like, you know, some animals can fly and some can swim. And some are, like, good at fighting, right? And so maybe you want to do that. But, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Nice. Yeah, it's interesting. So, yeah, the... So, so... With the partner stuff, so mm-hmm. are you are, like, are you controlling like both characters at different points in your mind, or is so, it a thing where you're like assigning an i like, like a task to them and they're they're yeah, executing? I'm it for I'm you. imagining that you basically each mission you play from the perspective of the koala and of your partner, mm-hmm. and like I don't know if you're switching in real time. Like I think Frank, you said something oh, that made me okay, okay. Yeah, Frank, you made me kind of think that maybe you can like live switch between them. So you could do a thing a thing where like Paul Revere, he presses X to say the British are coming. <laughs> and then you can like hot swap to your partner across town who's like waiting for some Brits to clear out and then like can go in and like, you know, oh, sabotage that's cool. munitions like or that. something. Yeah, so yeah that's cool. Yeah, I think you're maybe hot swapping. I like that. Yeah, because yeah, because then you could you can manipulate the conditions that exist within the town to like free up a lane for like one person to do, you know, another, another task or whatever that you couldn't get to before. That's cool. I like that. So 
I'm looking. Can you switch between companions at some point? Like in the front of the level, do you get to choose? Maybe is it front of yeah, front of run or front of level? I think so. I think at the very start of your the campaign, you get to pick one, and then at each start of mission, there's a chance to say like, do you want to divest from your current partner and invest in a new one? I don't know. It kind of seems like the fun is tr- is like trying different oh this level is going to be good with this partner so you like switch you know yes it sounds like we all agree we like the idea that you can switch if you want all right you want me to dig in yeah, yeah, yeah let's see do what it. you got all right so the first the first one i had was active human galloping <laughs> See if the time your button presses to go faster. I was thinking of like the most recent Ratchet and Clank game. They had this kind of like gimmicky thing where it's like it had like uh, haptic triggers on the uh, PS5 controllers. Oh, yeah. And so it was like there's resistance and you have to pull the left and right triggers and like in time to kind of like speed up in these like rocket skate things. Mm-hmm. It felt really cool in practice, but I was thinking nice. of something kind of similar to that just to like sort of try to optimize, you know, how fast you could move, I suppose, on on horseback. Yeah. Um, so this next card i was like thinking about like like finding or like making different kinds of items like he was a like the the real paul revere was like a silversmith so i was thinking maybe you could like make tools to kind of like pick locks or you know solve various problems or like make a spyglass to like make recon easier or like you know just different things like that i was thinking also of another timed button press thing where it's like you have to like it's almost like you're you're winding up a you know pull start lawnmower and so you have to like time like a button press at the top of a meter to like more loudly announce that the british are coming to like wake up particularly (laughs) sleepy villagers (laughs) and then yeah so the sort of win state per level was like waking a certain number of villagers and lighting the lantern means you could move on to the next level and so different villagers could have different waking conditions like one might Mm. you might need to like put a a pie on a windowsill and like the wafting smell wakes them up or like <laughs> one could be awakened by the crowing of a rooster that you bother in the yard or, you know, something yeah. along those lines. And yeah, also I, I thought about if, if you're crafting with like uh, your silversmith uh, skills, maybe you could like make different kinds of accessories and armor and speed boosts for your human horse. Nice human horse armor. Finally. Yeah. Human horse armor is what I'm thinking. Of. So like, what's the, what's the game? I think the game is you have some map, some large route mm-hmm. that you're navigating through. And like, you know, you're getting some intel or something about the Brits showing up. And your goal is to move from town to town, sufficiently alerting people so that they can fend off the army. I I think that's the idea is like you have a map, you go from town to town. Each mission is to alert them to the impending threat. What if, and this is, I don't know, adding more stuff on, I guess, but Mm -hmm. what if it's like you, you get Intel and you set everything up and you scout the route. But once you make the run, it's like a race or like it's timed at that point. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. And I, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Totally. No, no, no. I, I, I think that's great. And I, I think, yeah, okay. I, like the, I like the time pressure. I think it fits thematically and also is fun for like how you think about the trade offs with your partners and like why a sloth partner mm-hmm. like might be a tough <laughs> choice, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, wait, what else do we think? I mean, I feel like that's a, that's a pretty good overview. Seems like a video game. It seems like a video <laughs> game to me. Seems like a game. Hell yeah. Un- unfortunately, it seems like a video game. <laughs> <laughs> Despite our best efforts, <laughs> it's possible that we're approaching a game. Mm-hmm. Um, great. Let's let's do title then. We're cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Time for one last round of brainstorming. The title. Well, we're at the part of the episode where we're going to talk titles. The words we had today were Koala Bear, Paul Revere, and Buddy Cops. We've been working on kind of a reimagining of Paul Revere's famous Midnight Ride. So let's see what we've got for names. 
Nice. Frank, you're up first. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I was assuming everyone would kind of try to come up with their own mashup of Koala and Paul Revere. Yeah. So I kind of just wrote all of them. Nice. Like, Qu- Qual, Qual Revere? Mm-hmm. Qu- just Koala Revere. And then Qu- Koala, Koala, <laughs> Koala Revere. <laughs> Koala, Koala Revere. And then Koala Paula Revere. Yeah, what about Koala of Duty? <laughs> What about that? <laughs> Wait, that's actually pretty good. What? You should you should add that if you haven't added that. <laughs> I'll add that. Yeah, yeah but that shit. <laughs> um, sure, you're cooking. I also had the final ride. I had Eve of Revolution, Midnight Furry. Nice. Oh, nice. Um, I wrote Koala Lampour again. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, I have the game where the people are the horses. Mm-hmm. Fair. That is what uh, it is. Yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. Nice. That's what I got. Okay. Even Revolution Midnight Furry is is quite good. Is that mm-hmm. is that is good. Um I can go. My attempt at a mashup was Call Rebear. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I like that you tried to do something with Revere. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. <laughs> So Robert got, is yeah, it's almost something. <laughs> so it's almost something. I got Call Robert. I got Fuzzy Cops. Destiny's Wild. I don't know, just... Is that a playoff of Destiny's Child? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's just something okay, I was yeah. messing around with. This next one is Horrors of the Horsemen, mostly because that's what we seem to talk about all episode. Yeah, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. rightfully so. What? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, hit us. Before I begin, I did just okay. think of this as an idea. What if each of the human horses you're riding are the founding fathers? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, what if? Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's, that's yeah. good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just had to throw yeah. that out there. No, thank you. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so one if by land, two if by sea. You know, the famous the famous mm-hmm. phrase or the, the lanterns they were going to light to determine where the British are coming from. Alarm and muster was my favorite one that I came up with. I shouldn't say I came up with it, but basically mm-hmm. it was it was referring to the like it's what they called the alarm system that was triggered that this whole thing. Came, like, so the plan was called like it's like, OK, we put together the alarm and muster to like, again, muster the troops to, to, mm-hmm. to fight back against the British midnight ride, you know, pretty whatever about that one and then i also so i had yeah i had koal of duty and then i added guns of the patriots sure yeah right <laughs> sure as you as you do yeah yeah hmm. my vote would either be for eve of revolution midnight furry which i think is very good or alarm and muster but i feel like eve of revolution midnight furry is more in line with like the vibe of like the like yeah. the tone of it you know what i mean yeah that one kind of works for the game i did get a kick out of destiny's wild though <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> hard What's, not to yeah hard not to yeah is um, there a pun that we can do with uh, if one if by land, two if by sea, there's some sort of animal based pun in there. That's too hard to come um, up with on the spot. Maybe a horse made of man poo when he pees. <laughs> <laughs> Is that anything? <laughs> no. You don't think people would understand the connection? Say that again. <laughs> so we have one if <laughs> one if by land, two if by sea. So I'm saying horse made of man. <laughs> Poo when he pees. Why does he poo when he pees? Because you know. <laughs> what do you mean? He 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 does them both at the same time. <laughs> I guess I should no, say but... poos when he pees. Do, do horses do that? I don't know. <laughs> or a horse made of man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, that's the yeah. I got the that's the title there. <laughs> Um, 
Yeah, okay. So it's going to be Eve of Revolution Midnight Fury. It does, it does seem that way. <laughs> it does seem that way. <laughs> it's definitely not going to be over Horseman Man, but... I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to that one just in my just in my heart of hearts <laughs> for later. <laughs> yeah. In mind's eye. Yeah. Cool. I like you, Re- Revolution Midnight Furry. Ship it. Cool. Drew, you good with that? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's write this pitch. Last step. Write up the final pitch, which we'll share when we come back. All right, we're back. We're here for the pitch. We've got it all written up. We're here to share it with you. If you remember, we started out this episode with three prompts we had not seen before. We had Koala Bear, Paul Revere, and Buddy Cops. We pulled them out of a hat. Felt almost like the game was sitting right there in front of us. And now we have it here for you today. Frank, hit us with that pitch. Today's game is Eve of Revolution. Midnight Furry. One if by land, two if by sea, three if by a horse that's a man. Furries rejoice, we're making a game where Paul Revere is a koala bear. In this fuzzy reimagining of Paul's famous midnight ride, take control of the bear himself as he sets out to warn the animal colonies of the British invasion. With your chosen animal partner, you can scout out each town and plan your route to inform the people and avoid danger. These lanterns aren't going to light themselves. Each mission starts with a planning phase where you can divvy up objectives and waypoints on the map. When your plan is set, the clock starts and Paul and his partner will set out to inform the townsfolk. Navigate the world in third person as Paul and his partner strategically switching between the two as is needed. Each partner will bring a unique set of skills to your mission for you to take advantage of. Swimming, flying, climbing, and more are all at your disposal for you to make your perfect route throughout town. Different townsfolks are deeper sleepers than others, so you'll have to use clever problem solving to balance stealth and waking up citizens. Keeping a keen eye throughout the map will also reveal materials with which you can craft new tools and items. All the while, you'll be riding bareback on your trusty steeds, which, to be clear, are humans. We don't exactly mean they're like people. We're saying it's like, what if humans acted like horses, but they looked like humans? So I guess I guess they're running on all fours. Some of them could do cool stuff like climbing or beatboxing they're all named after the founding fathers i know we started talking about paul revere but we really just want to talk about the horses who are guys as long as you remember that the horses are pink and fleshy and largely hairless you're taking away the right stuff from this whole thing it's not that we don't care about the rest of the game it's just i just want you to know we spent a lot of time thinking about this whole horse thing anyways plan out your route race against the british and the clock The colonies depend on it. The moon is out. It's the eve of revolution. Release your midnight fury. Two history episodes back to back. Fuck. It's a history podcast now. We could probably get sponsorship from the History Channel. They love this kind of stuff. (laughs) They do. They love all sorts of stupid bullshit. I got a contact. My friend Adrian works for them. Is that so? Yeah. How does he like it there? He likes it somewhat. He's in a better role now. I think for a while he was pretty miserable because he was just like finding a lot of different shows and doing a lot of research or, or concepts, for, finding a lot of different concepts and doing research for a lot of different types of shows. And then his ideas are basically getting either shot down or co-opted. And then he wasn't really getting paid much. So that sucked. Now he's nice. doing better shit, which includes more interesting research and actually getting uh, more involved in like the actual production of stuff, which is cool. Nice. <laughs> well, his ideas probably didn't have like aliens in them or like cool big. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, a lot <laughs> yeah. of them did. That's the thing. It's like, uh, like interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pitching all sorts of weird shit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because the end of this episode is we're just hearing about your buddy Adrian's work situation. <laughs> right, right. It's <laughs> important stuff. <laughs> That's tight to me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, awesome. Everyone, that's our episode. 
<laughs> uh, thanks so much for listening. If you've got your own ideas for Eve of Revolution, Midnight Furry, please send them our way. We've got a Slido a link in the show notes that you can hit up. You can also hit us up at Scope Creep Pod on Twitter and Scope Creep Saloon everywhere else. Or you can go to scopecreepsaloon.com. That's where we have forms where you can contact us. So check it out. Leave us a message. We'd love to hear from you. We got a new game pitch every month, and we got mailbag episodes as people leave us stuff. So leave us stuff, and we can we can answer your questions. Follow us. Stay in the loop. See ya. And if you think you can make a better game than us, don't tell us that. That's me. <laughs> We're very <laughs> insecure about it. <laughs> We're very insecure about our game making. <laughs> Making is already pretty generous for what we do. Dang. <laughs> Loose brainstorm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Bye. Bye. Get out of my house. <laughs> Scope Creep Salute is lovingly brewed by Andrew Johnson, Frank Francis, and me, Eric Peterson. Voice intro by James Herron. Music from Steve Oxen. Roger Tees, Audio Mint, and Pantheon Music, with original music by Sam Vanderhoop Lee. Thanks so much for listening, and come back soon.